Hello, my name is Dr. Lucille Curtis, and I'm here today to tell you a little bit about a forthcoming channel talent session we've got coming on multimedia marketing campaigns. Um, so I'm going to share some slides with you now um, that will hopefully give you a little bit of time to um, have a think about the main subjects and headings involved in this talk uh, in order for you to do some advanced reading if you wish to, um, or at least spend a little bit of time just sort of thinking around the subject. Uh, so the session is being advertised currently. As you can see, it's um, about uh, design and execution of multimedia marketing campaigns. Uh, it will be a talk provided by myself um, and I'll give you a little bit of detail about my background and uh, career history to date. And also we're lucky enough to have um, a remarkable young lady called Kendra Rogers, who is currently uh, working for a fabulous agency called PS London Limited. Um, the session is on the 24th of March uh, between 3.35 and 4.20 in the afternoon. Um, I've put the full link here on the slides. Uh, you just need to um, obviously cut and paste that into um, your web browser and there is very clear instructions for you to register there. OK, so a little bit about myself. Um, I'm currently um, a lecturer in marketing at uh, Norwich Business School, University of East Anglia. Uh, prior to joining academia, I worked in marketing practice uh, for more than 16 years. Uh, I worked a lot um, with pharmaceutical companies in healthcare um, and, and also in local government. And during my time as a practitioner, I managed to achieve seven industry awards uh, for excellence in PR, marketing and management. I took that pure love of marketing uh, into doing a PhD a few years ago and my PhD focused on digital marketing and specifically social media management for business to business organizations. Uh, as well as teaching marketing at Norwich Business School, I'm also the director of admissions, marketing and recruitment for the school. Um, so I'm still very much doing marketing uh, every single day um, uh, on my normal job and it's uh, it's brilliant uh, to be involved and I'm also the course leader for our undergraduate uh, degree course, uh, the Bachelor of Arts in Marketing and Management. Uh, now to just introduce you to the fabulous Kendra Rogers. Uh, she's basically Head of Insight and Strategy at PS London. Um, in case you haven't heard of them, they are a brand and creative consultancy. She's very much at the forefront there of developing big, brave ideas, uh, compelling stories and activation vehicles that support emotionally led decision making. Kendra has developed single minded propositions for big brands in the United Kingdom, Canada and indeed in the United States. Her experience extends to creative, digital events and public relations, um, strategy experience in sectors including tech, higher education, lifestyle, charity, finance, destination and many more. Um, and she will be here with me all through the session um, on the 24th of March. So uh, she'll bring a wealth of experience. So you may be uh, listening to this video and thinking, what exactly does she mean by multimedia marketing campaigns? Multimedia marketing in simple terms is exactly what the name implies. It is a method of combining different forms of media to reach different target audiences and ultimately, of course, uh, to build brand recognition. The approach uses traditional media such as radio, newspaper, traditional advertising, as well as direct mail, and of course, digital channels such as email, 
mobile and social media. I've included a very uh, nice example here uh, of a partnership um, with dementia uh, and um, dementia charity and also the London Marathon, which incidentally um, was put together by PS London. I'm sure as you're sitting and watching this um, in your day to day lives, you can probably think of many other examples. And if you can't, a really good way to broaden your understanding of multimedia marketing campaigns is just to do some very simple searches on Google to see some of the best and indeed some of the worst um, current examples. So one thing that's really core to this idea of multimedia marketing campaigns is about the range of promotional tools you can use as a marketeer to put these campaigns together. I've just tried to summarize a few of those here um, from different forms of advertising, personal selling, which is much more about relationships, uh, sales promotion, of course, public relations, uh, direct marketing, digital marketing, sponsorship, and experiential marketing. Some of those terms for some of the audience listening to this may be less familiar. So things like ambush and guerrilla marketing. Um, it's a good idea if you've not heard those terms before, again, to do a little bit of research um, just to find out a little bit more about how they work within the context of a multimedia marketing campaign. Uh, and again, you know, look for examples, draw from your own experience um, and also have a think about what's popular at the moment. Have a little look on YouTube, uh, see what's trending, for example. Now, of course, when it comes to multimedia marketing campaigns, it's really, really, really important to do that marketing communications planning. Um, there's a course here, as you can see in the diagram on the left hand side of the screen, lots of different steps involved from the initial situation analysis, looking at what's going on in the current context that may influence marketing for your product or service. Then thinking, of course, about your audience and those all important target groups, your objectives, making sure that they're very precise and what we call smart, specific, measurable, etc. Um, so make sure that that's the interesting thing, if you like, about multimedia marketing campaigns is that the message still needs to be consistent, even if the channels of communication are different. Um, and I've given you some uh, question here to think about how important, as it were, is the context versus the objectives versus the budget. All these things need to work together, uh, but which is the priority? You can think about marketing communications planning a little bit like um, bringing together an orchestra. So um, musical score guides all members of the orchestra to play together. Marketing planning guides all the members of an organization to also work collegiately in collaboration together. So it's very important to have that team working running through the whole process. Now to lead into the core, if you like, um, of this talk or presentation uh, when Kendra and I bring it together on the 24th of March. We're looking very much within the context of multimedia marketing campaigns as to what the differences are between personalised and mass communication. Our overarching theme, if you like, for this talk is to think about uh, the humanisation aspects of the brand of the organization, of the product, and how this leads to better engagement ultimately with customers. Now we can see here 
uh, the differences between personal communications and mass communications. So if you think about the speed in which the messages reach the audience, uh, generally with personalised communications, um, it may take a little bit longer, more effort ultimately is required, whereas with mass communications, and the difference here very much mass communications is about uh, sending out messages to everybody, anybody and everybody who might be interested in your product, whereas a more personalised approach is more of company direct to one or a very, very small group um, of customers. And therefore, usually personalised communications just takes a little bit more time. Um, but as you can see from the second section of this tape, table here, the influence on the individual is much, much higher through personal um, communications in terms of um, influence, uh, attention value, and indeed ability to understand or comprehension. Whereas we see with mass communications, it's only selective perception, the ability to um, essentially um, siphon through the different messages that you receive throughout the day that is likely to be high here. But attention value is very, very low and understanding or com comprehension is moderate to low. Uh, and equally, when we look at the feedback, um, personalised communication is about two-way relationship building, whereas mass communication is only really useful for one-way um, communication. Speed of feedback is low with mass communication and speed of feedback is much, much higher um, in regard to those personal communication materials. An example of personal communication, of course, would be um, an email that's sent direct to you, for example, dear Lucille, uh, from a company offering me um, a promotion or further information, access to a newsletter. Uh, an example of mass communication might be um, a YouTube video, might be a big uh, advert, uh, if you think about Times Square in New York, uh, big message boards there that are basically, um, you know, pretty much sent out to anyone who happens to be passing at the time. So the other aspect of our talk is thinking not just about the customer in relation to marketing, but also thinking about the marketeer. So we talk a lot um, about this notion of psychological ownership and humanization. Psychological ownership for the marketeer, who is um, putting together these multimedia marketing campaigns, um, is about how much ownership the marketeer feels that they have over the communications. So in a sense, in this way, um, psychological ownership and humanization are double-edged. Marketeers' work contributes to psychological ownership experienced as beneficial, as in if you feel ownership over a piece of work, perhaps you're more likely to put in more effort um, and it makes it ultimately better in that way. Um, but through their work, the organisation also exerts psychological ownership. So even though the marketeer may feel that they are in control of the work they produce, ultimately that work, particularly when it goes out into the public domain, becomes uh, the ownership of the organisation. And it's hard really to uh, distinguish between the individual and the organisation in terms of the messaging. So likewise, drawing on a marketeer's emotional labour, that's basically um, labour that produces emotions within the individual, humanises the organisation. So if you're responding to a tweet, for example, uh, as a representative of an organisation, 
and you become you know emotional you become a little bit annoyed or you become a little bit excited about particular messaging then that's an example of emotional labor and the marketeer who goes through that process humanizes the organization but they might also be said to experience work as more enjoyable if they get involved and passionate about certain parts of their work. Now, it's well known that digital marketing as part of a multimedia marketing campaign, um, on one hand, um, we see that digital marketing encourages humanization of the organization and individuals. So from marketing and consumer research, uh, basically very positive. They've often celebrated digital technologies for creating effective ways of organizing, for helping to develop new products in terms of comments, feedback by so social media, and in communicating with and persuading users, customers and clients. There's some useful extra reading there. Um, I've put the references at the end of this um, presentation. And this has generated a lot of discussion about whether social media is restoring the humanizing elements of interpersonal communication. On the other side of things, recent research and scholarship has alluded to the dark side of digitalization and digital media for organizations and processes of organizing, suggesting technology encourages dehumanization. There's recent special issues on this topic in a publication called Organization. You can see the references at the end. So digital technologies can facilitate management control, perhaps through processes of surveillance, monitoring and self-tracking, and also algorithms. If you think about the many different algorithms in the social media sites that you use regularly, uh, there is an element there of control. So to summarise um, and to also give you some other points to think about before we go into more detail on this interesting, fascinating topic, um, I've just really um, introduced the notion of multimedia marketing campaigns. They comprise many different communications channels for different target audiences. There are a wide range of promotional tools which marketeers can choose. You might think about why um, particular campaigns use um, those uh, specific channels uh, and what might be better in the future. Marketing planning processes are critical for implementing multimedia marketing campaigns. And that's really about thinking about the what, why and how of marketing. Personalization as a strategy, strategy is designed to humanize products and brands. However, on the other side, there is also this notion of dehumanization, which is also a risk given the technological features, i.e., as I've mentioned, algorithms and the monitored nature of online marketing work. So a final thought at the end of this um, short talk today. How much are you aware of the humanizing and dehumanizing nature of digital marketing and social media in your day to day life? So just a very quick remind, uh, the full session is on the 24th of March. Uh, you can access the link here uh, and register very easily. Uh, as promised, uh, here are the references that I've cited within this short presentation today. Thank you very much for listening and I look forward to seeing, at least hearing from you uh, on the 24th of March. Thank you and goodbye.